Hello, dear friends. I'm Professor Kahaberja Kelly, and uh, today we are starting to speak about principles of marketing and why principles of marketing. Because in this semester, all universities around the world they uh, give to their students this opportunity to study well. One of most important subject of our civilization, what is marketing what is one of great philosophical stages as well to understand why we dislike something why we like another things why we appreciate some companies why we love brands why we are uh, influenced by different type of styles different type of brands different type of names uh, leaders and why we are happy and why we are unhappy uh, on the market and in our families as well. And family is also continuation of many different types of markets because marketing itself, this is universal discipline. It can be used in any type of situation in the family, in your community, in real type of business, in uh, non-profit organization activities. We can do many different type of things using the wisdom of markets, what is entitled as a marketing. So right now, this is one of the interesting definitions. What is the marketing? Marketing, this is the wisdom of the markets. Not everybody knows the wisdom of the markets, only people who are attentively uh, observing different type of markets, who are observing the habits of customers, who are also uh, starting to make surveys about how different type of products and services are sold, what customers dislike, what customers like, what kind of type of uh, feedbacks they, they tell, and what type of things they do after that, what customers feel, how customers think, and how they act. All these things, this is wisdom of the markets. If we know this and we analyze this, if we can uh, study all of these things and use that information in our activities. If we do this, if we use all these things and analyze them well and so try to um, implement all this wisdom into our business activities. It can be profit-oriented or non-profit-oriented business activities. We are marketers. But right now we start this new era. We also think about what is the profession of the marketing what marketing brings to the market and how marketers are seen by other professionals of the business. And right now we can say that we also did some uh, studies, some researches, some surveys. Also, I read a lot of surveys um, made by my colleagues in different countries. And we can say that marketing is a philosophy an attitude, a perspective, or a management orientation that stresses customer satisfaction. It's also organizational activity, set of institutions and processes. Right now, when we speak about how marketers are seen by many different type of professionals of the world, in different type of levels of the businesses, we can use this very interesting survey, what I read uh, some uh, days ago. This was a survey about what chief executive officers think about uh, chief marketing officers. And uh, we say that 80% uh, of chief executive officers, they think that chief marketing officers are uh, responsible for the growth 
of the company. Why? Because we live in very interesting type of situation and uh, uh, all of these type of people, chief marketing officers, chief executive officers of the companies, uh, directors of uh, different type of fields and so on, entrepreneurs and people and journalists and teachers and professors of different fields, uh, po political uh, actors, politicians and uh, uh, many different type of people, many different type of professionals today. Uh, today we have uh, 26 uh, of February. Uh, many people, they are concerned about a potential recession and these fears is shifting their uh, practices from long-term processes to some short-term term processes. And right now we can say that chief marketing officers are also concerned about potential recession and this fear is shifting their marketing practices from long-term brand building to more demand-driven marketing uh, activities, marketing tactics. So we say that uh, brands right now they seek to improve targeting and modeling customer behavior. Uh, many uh, from uh, chief marketing officers will also be focused on creating best in class customer experience this year. Uh, we can say that right now we we have the year of experience marketing or experiential marketing and uh, many companies who are weaponed by this great type of marketing what is experiential marketing and experiential marketing it's, it's something unusual interesting especially this is some type of art and this art is not easy for example when we speak about experiential marketing we can go um, mentally to uh, different type of companies, especially what comes to my mind immediately when I speak about experiential marketing, this is Four Seasons. Four Seasons is offering not only Italian food, but it's offering Italian dining experience. But to do this, this great company opened special type of institute in Toscana in Italy, and from the United States, this company is sending their uh, managers, capable managers who can uh, drive their success, uh, also um, making new discoveries in Italian uh, dining experience to try to know all kinds of type of great things, how Italian dining experience can be done, not only in Italy, but to different soil, what is the United States and to offer to customers the same Italian dining experience, especially Toscanian dining experience. And these managers from the United States, they come, they learn, they discover, they observe Italian dining experience. And when they coming back to the United States, they are bringing new methodologies, new skills to offer to final customers a really Toscanian, Italian dining experience. And right now we can say that this experiential marketing, what is done by Four Seasons is wonderful. When you go to that restaurant, you are eating not only Italian food, but you are surrounded by Italian fine uh, dining experience by history of Toscana, by history of different type of um, foods and different type of things, what is wonderful. And you feel that this is a great time for you. And that means that all times four seasons trying to find what customers think what customers feel, how they act, what type of 
narratives they tell to their colleagues or their friends, their family members after they uh, being in, involved into this type of Italian or Tuscanian dining experience. So that means that right now this is new time. This is time of experiential marketing and many companies, they should try to give if they have this type of opportunity, if they have this type of skills. It's not only the skills of management or finance. This is the skills of uh, well-developed marketing. And this is also the skills uh, how to understand the process, what's going on uh, on the markets. So right now we can say that 70% of all chief marketing officers, they also see themselves as a main uh, responsible uh, persons for the sustainability of the company and growth of the company. And they are also seen by chief marketing, uh, chief executive officers in the same way. Chief executive officers also, they think that uh, marketing officers, uh, they marketing officers or marketing uh, directors or leaders of uh, different type of marketing departments, they are responsible for the growth of the markets, for the growth of their company. So, and right now we have three horses of chief marketing officers, what is very essential right now. The first horse this is experiential marketing, how to do this experiential marketing and how to offer this experiential marketing to the uh, customers. The second thing is uh, CRM, customer relationship management, how to establish special type of uh, relations to the customers and how to manage this relation really well using different type of artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. And the third horse, this is integrated marketing communications and branding. How to brand through integrated marketing communications and through strategic marketing. So all these things, all these three horses must be managed really well. And we know that how it's difficult to manage three horses uh, by some type of uh, great action. What is the action of the marketing. And right now we say that uh, we have a very interesting situation today. Marketing deals with exchange. In exchange, we see at least two parties, but right now exchange is shifted to virtual rooms, is shifted to some different type of virtual societies, it's also done in physical societies and uh, in, in all type of exchanges, marketers try to establish something of value, to establish communication and delivery uh, to their final customers, uh, to give uh, perceived value to their uh, final customers and uh, uh, to inspire their desire uh, to uh, to buy and when we speak about how we came to that uh, station where we are right now how we came to that field where we are right now we can say that we already uh, walked to that point uh, during 5000 years or more but in that period we had different type of stages, what are entitled as a eras of uh, some uh, salesmen or purchasing or some other type of philosophy. So first of all, humanity was in production era. And in production era, it was only one great uh, a question how to establish the production how to deal with assembly line and how to give mass production to final customers but we know that finally they they were in the jam in the jam of production why because they were not doing uh, proper marketing researches they are they were not doing 
surveys and they did not know what really customers uh, wanted. Uh, so after production era failed, and production era failed because salesmen, they uh, established high position in any type of uh, activities, any type of um, purchasing behavior activities. Salesmen, they uh, were concerned about a big number of uh, low quality production and they put as an essential point to, to the companies to do surveys, to, to study, to search the markets, to search the customers, to try to search what really customers wanted. And salesmen, they started the sales era. The sales era was more oriented to uh, some type of marketing, what we know right now. But but it was not a uh, systematical uh, surveys. It was, it was not systematical process when salesmen tried to find what's going on on the markets. And only when companies, they uh, established special type of marketing research budgets, and they started to do systematically the uh, marketing research and they, started to do something what is entitled as a to understand the customers understand customers insights understand what customers really think what customers really feel how customers really act and what type of narratives they say when they watch the product or the service only after that uh, we can say that marketing era is started and right now we live in different era than marketing our era our stage is more complicated than marketing era marketing era was um, so more oriented to main actor of the society this was businessmen but right now we we think that businessmen cannot be right if businessman is not responsible for the environment, for the society, for my kids, his or her own kids, for animals, for natural resources, for our fresh air, for blue sky, and many interesting things. And that's why we can say that right now we live in social marketing period. And this social marketing period sometimes is entitled as a societal marketing. And in societal marketing, we see the triangle. This triangle is right now a very interesting combination of main sources of the, of the field. The uh, businessmen and uh, customers are well known by us, but the third egg is third egg of triangle is society, is general publics, is you or, or me and we together. So that means that the third egg of this triangle, we, we people. And what this businessman does for his or her Customers, direct customers, is not important for me because I'm not customer. But this businessman should think what to do in the way of social responsibilities to me, to try to make fine things, to try to encourage the protection of environment, the protection of natural environment to protection of everything what's going on what is great that's why people are uh, angry sometimes on business field because businessmen they without special type of societal marketing plan they do something what was uh, experienced by them 
in the last century, in the 20th century. But we should know that we live in 21st century, and this century is also entitled as a period of societal marketing. And in this societal marketing, businessmen is not only thinking about target customers, but thinking about all people from the general publics. So this is a very interesting type of the point and how uh, orientation of uh, companies to the societal uh, some communities, to the society uh, can be done. They should have information about what they do wrongly, how they destroy the nature, what kind of type of risks they uh, bring to the nature, to the environment, examine the information from a total business perspective, determine how to deliver superior customer value, not only to their customers, but also superior uh, social responsibilities to their uh, uh, publics and implement this type of activities into real action. So this is the uh, great thing. And when we speak of that, uh, we live uh, in a societal marketing stage. Yeah, it's great. So what do customers want, need, and how can we benefit the society? This is a great question right now for that type of period. But uh, in a marketing era, what is finished already 20 years ago, uh, was uh, well known by one great question. What do customers want and need only? So businessmen, they had very easy task to know about their customers, to know deeply about what customers think, how they think, what customers do, how they act, what type of narratives they tell to their family members and uh, colleagues, all these things they they uh, was only all these things it was only one great thing for marketing one great question for marketing in sales era uh, how can we sell more aggressively this was only one question for uh, for companies for organizations in production era a uh, great question was what can we make or do best and companies they tried to do something what was best for example georgian winemakers they were doing wine other uh, tea makers from china and india they were doing tea and uh, this was deep specialization of different type of markets so right now we can say um, uh, many interesting type of things about why societal marketing is great because we we know right now from very important formula of rogers uh, that uh, this formula is entitled as a diffusion formula of rogers that that customers they don't come easily to new products and new services, what we are offering to them. We can say that even if we do some kind of type of great, great products and great services, customers, they are very skeptical, usually. And only 2,3% of all target customers will uh, come and test your product or taste your product and this 2,6 percent of all target customers they are innovators they are entitled as a as an innovators after them uh, early adopters will come so the number of early adopters in any society as the number of innovators in any society if the number of innovators in any society, this is 2,6% of, uh, from target customers, the number of early adopters is also uh, from any societies, 16%.
and early adopters, they, they are much more skeptical than innovators. And they all times try to follow the innovators. If innovators buy, after that, they are influenced by innovators. Innovators, they are opinion leaders. They have another type of psychological goal to the society. They uh, try to envision the society by their uh, purchasing uh, skills and purchasing tactics. And these innovators sometimes speak to, to many type of people, especially attentively uh, listening are uh, early adopters. And uh, they buy. They buy after innovators. They follow innovators. And they are 16% from any type of uh, target uh, target customers. After innovators and after early adopters, the third wave of customers are coming. And the title of this third wave of customers, this is, uh, so we can say that uh, this is uh, main society, main society who are, who are, dividing into uh, two different stages. So, uh, and this uh, first stage of society, this is like 30, 35%, uh, they, they follow early adopters, they buy the product, and after then the late majority is coming, also they are 35% of all, all target customers, and after late majority, we have conservators. Sometimes conservators are entitled as a laggards, and they buy the product. Some conservators, they all times are skeptical about new products, new things, new services, new ideas, and uh, that's why they are entitled as a conservators. And they are last wave of customers who buy some products, some new products and some new services. So that means that market, what is our target market, can be divided into uh, different type of waves of customers and the first wave of customers, this is innovators, this is three, uh, this is like three percent, after that comes early adopters, 16 percent, uh, after early adopters we can have uh, early majority, 35%. After early majority, we can have late majority, also 35%. And after late majority, conservators are coming and conservators are buying the products and services. So that's why the marketing is very complicated activity. In marketing, first of all, you should think about how to attract innovators and what to do to make innovators to be happy, to make them to be gatekeepers of the market. And if innovators are happy, they play the role of gatekeepers of the market. And they attract another way of customers who are entitled as a early adopters. After some period, if early adopters are happy and they are now by 16% from wall market, they attract, they play the role of gatekeepers to early majority. After some period, late majority is also involved. What does mean? That means that you are very successful in that period. If late majority is involved, uh, if we use the concept of product life cycles, you are in growing stage or you are in maturity stage. Product life cycles are also divided into implementation of the product, growing period of the product, maturity period of the product, and after some period, decline is coming. Yeah. So that means that if early majority and late majority is coming, to you and buying your products and services. That means that you already grew well. And right now you start already maturity stage. And that means that you are star 
all the market and this is another wisdom this is bcg market the this is the bcg matrix what is the matrix of boston consulting group and in bcg matrix we understand that if everything goes well our sales growing well we are already star product what is the star product according to the bcg uh, matrix the star product is the product what is sold well what has high market share in high growing markets so that means that we are very successful so right now when we speak about uh, building relationships to final customers uh, we need customer oriented personnel in our company uh, every employee represents the firm in the eyes of the uh, customer employee training programs we need empowered employees we need employees are given more authority to solve customer problems uh, on the market and we need teamwork emphasizing cooperation over competition so right now we can say that many companies in our country in different countries still they don't uh, understand well uh, the uh, societal marketing or don't understand well the marketing era some companies even today can be in sales era some companies even today can be in uh, production era why because they are concerned about uh, to produce something what they know in which they are best so they cannot change themselves they cannot uh, reform their insights and that's why the leadership concept is all times very important they need leaders leaders must come to that companies and uh, develop these companies through great changes through great reforms so we should know well the business of the company uh, we should have customer focus and uh, we must all times innovate and uh, direct the company to the creativity and all times marketers must stimulate uh, the change in uh, customer preferences for example uh, many uh, many many uh, different type of managers in uh, companies they don't like this change at all i remember my case when i came to one company and this company was oriented this was winemaking giant and this company was oriented to cost-based pricing and when I started to search the market and make surveys in our export markets, I understood that our wine was over expensive, overpriced. And this was stupidity of the company. And I immediately started to do uh, great changes. I destroyed the, uh, I destroyed the, system of cost based pricing and i started to develop the system about uh, some interesting type of value based pricing and uh, uh, so i also uh, developed the uh, process what was oriented to moral pricing for our uh, final customers and uh, uh, this uh, change was really uh, successful and after we me and my team we implemented new type of uh, pricing what is target pricing and how when we destroyed totally destroyed the cost based pricing in the company the company's prices were more suitable for final customers they were loved by customers and the sales grew uh, 
with very high uh, volumes. And uh, we were in that period champions of the market. So that means that pricing is very important. Product policy is very important. Place policy is very important. So, and promotion is very important. So all marketing is based on different type of instruments. And these instruments, sometimes they are combined in four piece. Sometimes they are combined in seven piece. When we speak about marketing instruments, we should all times use well, them well. And this is uh, product policy, price policy, place or distribution policy, and uh, the promotion policy. So that means that this is the four piece. But if we add some additional three piece, we will be more professional uh, for the market. Uh, this additional three piece will be physical evidence of the products and of the services. This will be people because we do all kind of things for the people and people must be involved in our activities. And what is the people orientation of the company? Sometimes some companies even today use well this people orientation. They allow people through uh, crowd, uh, crowd uh, funding or crowd marketing to establish their ideas about the models, about some, uh, some designs, and they do this uh, according the ideas of their customers, according ideas of their of people. And people are doing uh, some great role in decision making or in that type of very innovative companies. And some companies already, they, uh, they went really rapidly into mass customization and they allow people to try to find their ideas and they do something unusual for them according the ideas of the people uh, according preferences of the people so people orientation of the company this is also the way um, towards what uh, marketers should drive their companies and uh, uh, when we speak about uh, satisfaction of customers, this is right now a very important point, but uh, satisfaction of customers and satisfaction of society, this is societal marketing already. We should try to understand all these type of things and drive our company to societal marketing. And why study marketing? Uh, first of all, uh, it's important uh, to society. We should know well the societal marketing and try to uh, involve society in our activities, in decision making, ask some uh, suggestions to the opinion leaders from the society, but they must not be, they must not be the customers of our products or services. They must be only people with their own ideas. And uh, we, if we are uh, uh, linked to the society and we, if we understand why society dislikes something in our action, what society will desire from us in future, we will be societally important company. So good career opportunities we also find in marketing. Marketing officers have great career opportunities, especially today when uh, chief executive officers, they think about marketers that, oh, he is a marketing, he is a, or she is a marketer, and they are responsible for the growth of my company. So that means that this is new role high responsibility for the growth marketing has right now and uh, this is great uh, important not only for the business but for the economy of the country 
and uh, so when we speak about the uh, marketing we must not forget about the definition uh, not all definitions are important but this definition can be important for you uh, uh, so uh, sometimes definitions also guide our success we can say that marketing this is the process by which companies engage customers build strong customer relationships and create customer value in order to capture value from customers in return so that means that this is right now great definition because you as a marketer you create value for your customers and also you try to capture value from customers in exchange but um, when we speak about marketing and markets we must not forget about peter peter drucker uh, sometimes in some societies peter drucker is entitled as a, a great magician of uh, business thoughts also i think that great magician of business thoughts uh, was uh, great max weber uh, so they they are role is um, over overwhelming for the marketing thoughts business thoughts and we can say that management guru peter drucker said the aim of marketing is to make selling unnecessary so selling and advertising are only part of a larger marketing mix a set of marketing tools that work together to engage customers satisfy customer needs and build customer relationships so that means that if someone still thinks that marketing is only advertising it, it's not right marketing is great philosophy what what makes new markets to be established and what tries to um, make uh, a lot of customers to engage into the process of the marketing so right now when we speak about customer engagement marketing this is uh, right now more turned into experiential marketing so how to engage the customer without sharing great experience of the field and uh, some fine experience what will make customers to be inspired to be happy to feel think something great and uh, tell stories about this experience to others to be gatekeeper of the company to, to be also a brand ambassador of the company when we speak about customer engagement marketing this is making the brand a meaningful part of the co consumers uh, and uh, to make consumers all times uh, to think about this experience and uh, right now when we speak about um, this type of uh, great marketing what is experiential marketing we can say that customer perceived value plays best role in this marketing so the customer's evaluation of the difference between all the benefits and all the costs of a marketing uh, this type of evaluation um, we should capture we should uh, survey well and uh, on this type of uh, customers evaluation we must uh, establish the uh, hierarchy special type of building what is entitled as a experiential marketing and uh, all these things they need um, uh, great theory knowledge to the theory and uh, 
experience from the practical activities. So uh, when we speak about the job of marketer, we can say that marketers all times try to know more, to read a lot of books, uh, to be masters in different fields, to understand main things, to understand technologies, to try to know well insights of their customers, to feel very comfortably in psychologies, sociologies, and uh, to be more oriented to the brain of the happy customer, to be uh, weaponed by narrow marketing skills, all these ty type of things are needed to be a really great marketing officer right now, to be great chief marketing officer right now. And so we can say that all these things can come by hard working and by great courage to try to discover new things, to observe the markets, to survey customers and to find solutions for the markets and for the companies. Thank you very much. Wishing you great knowledge and all the best.